civil rights and trial attorney, Krista Ramey. Krista, this one's an interesting one. Um, at the end of the day, it's going to be about the use of force. Was it reasonable under the circumstances? So let's talk about that a little bit. The guy obviously throws something in his face. It looks like popcorn. Um, now, in his statement to police, Reeves says he didn't know what was thrown in his face. The victim is taller than him. He's bigger. He's younger. Is that going to be enough for this type of force met with what happened? And we have a video of what happened and what we were able to see in the theater. Yeah, I, I think this is a tough one for uh, a self-defense uh, case to actually stick with the jury. Um, you have a retired police officer and the defendant as well. So while he was older and not as big as the um, as the, the victim here, you do have a situation where you have an experienced um, you know, peace officer that is the defendant. Um, so I think that you have to consider that as well when taking into his state of mind. This, you know, he knew what was thrown at him. He knew it was popcorn. Um, I think that this was um, a man that had a heightened temper um, that, you know, was easily triggered in that moment, um, actually quite literally. And I, I think that a self-defense, uh, even if he threw uh, the whole container of popcorn at him or a cup or anything, to pull out a firearm in response um, and shoot it is not an appropriate response. Uh, you know, your, your guests should know that the response needs to be, compa you know, comparable to what is you're being met with. So if you're met with a fist, you can maybe come back with a fist or maybe something a little bit more elevated, but you can't come back with a, a gun, you know, so you have to use proportional horse. And I don't think that that's what you have here. No, I, I don't think so either. But again, he did say he was in fear for his life. But let me ask you this. The fact that he's a former police officer, a captain at that, how does that complicate things? Because is this idea of reasonableness subjective to the point where, let's say, this was a woman sitting there with her daughter, for instance, or a police officer, or this guy who's a retired police officer. And when the jury begins to determine whether his response was reasonable, do you think the fact that he's a cop is going to factor into that determination? I do, and that's why I mentioned it. I, I actually do. I think that when you're looking at someone who is not as sophisticated, um, who doesn't have you know firearms training, that doesn't know what um, kind of force you can meet with other force, you know, because of their training, um, that this officer knows when use of deadly force is appropriate um, for a police officer. So when you're looking at defending yourself as a private citizen that much should be taken into account and you you have that knowledge you've been trained on it and so i think that for a jury it's going to be harder for them to give him the benefit of the doubt if it was you know a, a woman for instance or an, uh, you know a teenager or someone who wasn't as sophisticated uh, there might be a different you know weighing of that information all right, that's the movie Popcorn Murder Trial. Jury selection is going on now. We're going to bring that to you live. My understanding is uh, opening statements are expected to begin on Thursday. So, of course, stay with Court TV for that.